morning uh maggie here from political view so wanted to watch a bit of trump's announcement unfortunately i missed it live yesterday so i found a place that actually has it so i wanted to watch a little bit of it and see what he has to say let's begin <laughs> oh, this is going to be painful to watch. I wonder if there's a way of speeding it up. Speed. Here we go. Because I don't want to be here forever watching this. Uh, let's see. Because I don't know how long this is. Oops, went too far. Alright, I think we're back. Yeah, America's large after the number one fastest economic recovery ever recorded. the incoming administration and all they had to do was just sit back and watch inflation was non-existent our southern border was by far the strongest ever and because the border was so tight drugs were coming into our country at the lowest level in many many years importantly after decades of rising energy costs the united states had finally attained the impossible dream of american energy independence which soon would have turned into energy dominance for the first time in memory china was reeling in Back on its heels, you've never seen that before, because the United States was outdoing them on every single front, and China was paying billions and billions of dollars in taxes and tariffs. The farmers know that because they got 28 billion of it. No president had ever sought or received one dollar for our country from China until I came along, and we were getting hundreds of billions of dollars. Many people think that because of this, China played a very active role in the 2020 election. Just saying, just saying. I'm sure that didn't happen. Instead of jobs and factories leaving America for China, they were for the first time ever leaving China for America. Businesses were pouring back because of our historic tax and regulation cuts, the biggest in both categories in history, bigger even than what Ronald Reagan was able to produce, and he produced a lot. China, Russia, Iran, and North Korea were in check and respected. They respected the United States, and quite honestly, they respected me. I knew them well. I knew them well. The vicious ISIS caliphate. So we're only like six and a half minutes in, and this is already painful to watch. But he does bring up a few points. Some of the stuff happening probably wouldn't have happened if he, unfortunately, was reelected. And because, unfortunately, nobody is res res respecting Biden right now. I mean, the stuff that the foreign media says, and I'm, I'm, not, and I'm not talking like China or Iran or Russia, like <clears throat> pe what people would consider right now are uh, not so much enemies, but rivals, I guess you want to say, for uh, being a world power. But we're talking about France and Germany. Like, they got, they ain't so nice. I'm probably sure the nicest thing somebody said about him was he's senile. All right, so let's see what else he has to say. You know, I don't understand why it takes an hour to make an announcement. Like, just do come out and say, Biden sucks, I'm running again. Like, how hard is that? Takes, what, two seconds? ...which no president was able to conquer, was decimated by me and our great warriors in less than three weeks, and al-Baghdadi, its founder, was hunted down and killed. North Korea had not launched... North Korea had not launched a single long-range missile since my summit with Chairman Kim Jong-un nearly three years before we developed a relationship, and that's a good thing, not a bad thing. It's a good thing. Very good thing, actually, because look at what's happening today. My opponents made me out to be a warmonger and just a terrible person who would immediately go into war. They said during the 2016 campaign that if he becomes president, there will never be a war within weeks, and we will have wars like you've never seen before. It will happen immediately, and yet I've gone decades, decades without a war, the first president to do it for that long a period. The world... Decades? Decades. Can't you just say, you're four years that you were in office? I don't really think you need decades. Oh, Lord Almighty. Oh, excuse me. See what was at peace. 
America was prospering and our country was on track for an amazing future because I made big promises to the American people and unlike other presidents, I kept my promise. I kept my promise. Under our leadership, we were a great and glorious nation, something young period of time. We were a strong nation, and importantly, we were a free nation. But now we are a nation in decline. We are a failing nation. For millions of Americans, the past two years under Joe Biden have been a time of pain, hardship, anxiety, and despair. As we speak, inflation is the highest in over 50 years. Gas prices have reached the highest levels in history, and expect them to go... All right. I didn't mean to mute him, but yeah, was, that was starting to get painful. He's got a point. I mean... Gas prices, they are like double, some places triple what they were this time during Trump's reign. I don't like the man on a personal level, but he did his job. I'll give him that. I didn't like Clinton either. Couldn't stand the man, but he did his job, so... You do your job, you do it right, and you don't screw over the public. Hey, I'm all for you. All right, let's watch some more of this. Strategic national reserves, which I filled up, have been virtually drained in order to keep gasoline prices lower just prior to the election. Yeah. Joe Biden has intentionally surrendered our energy independence. There is no longer even a thought of dominance, and we are now begging for energy help from foreign nations, many of whom find us detestable. Yep. Our southern border has been erased, and our country is being invaded by millions and millions of unknown people, many of whom are entering for a very bad and sinister reason. And you know what that reason is. Mm. We will be paying a big price for this invasion into our country for years to come. Okay. Hundreds of thousands of pounds of deadly okay. drugs, including very lethal fentanyl, are flooding across the now open and totally porous southern border. Yep. The blood-soaked streets of our once great cities are cesspools of violent crimes, which are being watched all over the world as leadership of other countries explain that this is what America and democracy is really all about. How sad. The United States has been embarrassed, humiliated, and weakened for all to see. The disasters in Afghanistan, perhaps the most embarrassing moment in the history of our country, yep. where we lost lives, left Americans behind, and surrendered $85 billion worth of the finest military equipment anywhere in the world. Oh, that was and painful. Ukraine, which would have never happened if I that were your president, so are something... Like, that should have been some of the first stuff to leave Afghanistan. Nope, this fool leaves it behind. I'm like, are you kidding me? Seriously. That should have been some of the first things out of there, along with our civilians, our military gear. Now, they have it in Afghanistan. Great job, you senile old fool in office. All right, I'm going to skip quite a bit of this because I'm not sitting here for an hour to watch this. So I'm going to try to skip forward a little bit. And see where he makes his announcement. 2016, I am your voice. I am your voice. The Washington establishment wants to silence us, but we will not let them do that. What we have built together over the past six years is the greatest movement in history because it is not about politics. It's about our love for this great country, America, and we're not going to let it fail. I am running because I believe the world has not yet seen the true glory of what this nation can be. We have not reached that pinnacle, believe it or not. In fact, we can go very far. We're going to have to go far. First, we have to get out of this ditch. And once we're out, you'll see things that nobody imagined for any country. It's called the United States of America, and it's an incredible place. We are Americans, and we do not have to endure what has taken place in Washington, D.C. This is our country, our government, and the Carters of power. Or are they our Carters? They're not their Carters. These are our Carters. And we are coming to take those Carters back. So... so He's running. Well, third time running, will he get his second term? Who will vote for him? I'm wondering who's going to run in 2024 on the Democrat on the elect uh, Republican ticket. Chuck Schumer is telling the, the Republicans, don't do it. Disassociate yourself from Trump. I wouldn't trust that old fogey as far as I could hurl his lion behind. But, you know, I'm a New Yorker and I can't stand him. So, um, so that in a nutshell, 
my God, that man loves to talk. Um, he's running. I'm sorry I couldn't watch the whole thing with you, but there's no way. Oh, it was getting painful. So, who's ready for another Trump campaign? I was kind of hoping he would hold off until everything is done with the runoff between uh, Herschel Walker and Warnock in Pennsylvania. But now all eyes are going to be taken off of that and put on him. So let me know what you think. Are you interested in having another Trump on the ticket? Do you think he'll run as a Republican? Do you think he may end up going on as a something else on the ticket if he doesn't get the Republican nomination? It'll be interesting to hear what you guys have to say. I'm just going to sit back and I'm going to see who is going to run and then make my choice from there. So, like, subscribe, and share. Don't forget to ring the notification bell, and I'll catch you on the next video. Bye.